today's tech tip, we're going to be talking about filter carts, fluid transfer carts, what to look for in construction and componentry. Uh, we have a cart here as an example, very heavy duty base. This cart can be uh, stored vertically or it can be laid down horizontally if it's in a vehicle. Large wheels to roll over cracks in the floor. Heavy duty cord reel, retractable. I mean, these are going to handle some amperage, so you want a nice one. And then, of course, our fixed displacement gear pump. These are very mechanically efficient. And uh, our filters, which we'll talk about in a little bit, an inlet hose, large diameter, and our outlet hose. Uh, some people have these carts specifically for hydraulics, specific gear lube, so they don't intermix uh, the uh, fluids into the wrong tank. So this cart also incorporates a bypass valve in case you were dumping the fluid and you didn't want to filter it, it can go right to a waste barrel. Uh, but most importantly, you want to have uh, filters that are beta rated because uh, you want the best chance of putting clean oil into your reservoir because you're only going through these filters one time and this is, is pretty rare because uh, these filters are rated on the multi-pass filter test and that's how they get their beta rating. This one here happens to be uh, beta 1000 which is 99.9% uh, .9 uh, efficient on the multi-pass filter test but we're not multi-passing we're only going one time through the filters and into our power unit over here so to have the best chance of putting clean oil into our tank we need to go through two of these in series and uh, as you can see here, we're using a 3 micron beta 1000. And this is uh, our best chance of cleaning up those uh, 2 micron particles of the ISO 4406 cleanliness code target. So uh, also important is never stick a wand inside your hydraulic reservoir and introduce hundreds of thousands of particles. This, uh, this unit here has already a breather adapter on it with a dust cover on it and it gives you access to the reservoir via the quick disconnect so you're not inserting a dirty wand inside the tank. So you merely just remove the dust caps keeping it clean and snap it onto the tank. And now you're ready to uh, transfer fluid. And then everyone in the plant knows this is the connection where you fill, drain, and top off your tank. So it works good. This is uh, what it looks like. You can see it has a down tube depending upon the height of the tank. And uh, it gives you a high quality breather, not uh, a foam element that you see on some of the lesser cost breathers. This one also has uh, an indicator on it so you know when to change it. It has a place to date code it. You can write your date code in there. And this one actually has a deliquescent chemical on it so that uh, it uh, reduces the dew as the air goes into the tank to help reduce moisture in the tank. And then uh, on exhalation, when a cylinder retracts, it actually refreshes itself. So uh, a much better breather than the, uh, the cheaper versions. So again, uh, an indicator gauge on the filter. Uh, we have some uh, uh, differential pop-ups, but we also have a visual gauge. So this moves, you know you're flowing oil and it's on the last filter so when this one's dirty you change them both. Uh, you, you've seen these before, very common. Uh, it's just got a foam element in there. This one's uh, deteriorating it. Um, I can actually see light through the element. No, no beta rating here and it also, I don't like it because it gives people access to the tank and the last thing you want them to do is insert a filthy wand in the tank or leave this off the tank. So again this, uh, this assembly replaces that. It gives you a a uh, nice quick disconnect that works with the filter cart and then everyone in the plant knows this is where you fill, drain, and top off and then of course the much improved uh, breather assembly on top because remember everything uh, you see that's floating in the air is going to go in the tank when a cylinder extends and of course if you can see it it's 40 micron and it's going to show up on the particle counter. So let me just put this back put the QD on there, the cap, and uh, take a look at this here. This is an option that uh, sometimes we put on. This is a, a particle counter. It reads out an ISO 4406 and counts the two, six, and 14 uh, size particles for you. And that can go right on the filter card. 
Okay, so just, just to review very quickly, um, most important thing, if you want a chance of putting clean oil uh, into your tank, and you know, new oil is uh, dirty as we know, it's probably 22-2018 ISO code, and uh, if you go through one filter in single pass, they're about 50% efficient on the two micron particles and a little better on the six and the 14, but uh, you're not gonna clean it up going through a filter one time. So that's why we have two in series, sometimes even three, to make sure we have a chance of putting clean oil in the tank on a single pass application here. So we talked about using the cart for fluid transfer, putting new oil in the tank. We can also drain the tank, bypass the filters, and discard the oil, which is, is relatively rare. But the cart can also be used for uh, recirculation of a hydraulic power unit. But I will caution you on that. Uh, if uh, you do put this on the unit and you recirculate it, it will clean up the unit. But as soon as you disconnect it, the unit will go back to its old ISO code, uh, which is dependent upon the filters that are on the system. So if you think you're going to clean it up for perpetuity, it won't. It'll go back to its old ISO code relatively quickly. So. Uh, you know, if you really wanted to clean this unit up and maintain your ISO cleanliness code all the time, you would put a recirculation loop on there, seal it up, put the right breather, and forget about it and let it go, and it'll maintain its ISO code or be below its ISO code.